Welcome to the Radio Vault Mystery Theater. I am the Keeper of the Vault. The spoken word, when it is heard, can be used to breathe hope into the darkness of a person's life. They can also destroy hope if they are not true. So many times, spoken words can be used for harm. Our story tonight is Spoken Word. Act 1. Christina Baez made a living as a storefront fortune teller. The truth is, she was just a huckster who enjoyed gaining people's trust with beautiful stories of hope and good fortune. Then after getting their trust and belief, gave them a story of their imminent danger, and selling them useless elixirs to protect them from their misfortune. After a few months, she would then proclaim they had averted the danger because of taking the potions. She would then start the process over again. Sue Herbert was one of her most loyal customers and had spent thousands of dollars with Christina. I am so grateful to you, Christina. You have become a trusted friend and advisor to me. Well, I'm just happy to have been able to deliver the good news to you and help you avert the danger. (laughs) Yes, yes, (laughs) of course. I'm so glad you gave me the clarity potion. You told me that I was in danger of a fatal car accident. After I drank the potion, I had a dream that my brakes went out and I got into a horrible accident. So the next day, I had my car checked out and found out that my brakes were in really bad shape. So you saved my life. I am forever grateful to you. Well, I'm glad I was able to keep you from being harmed. (laughs) Do you have any more of that potion? I'd like to buy another bottle. Oh, yes. Well, here's the thing. You know, I I only have one left. So, I can't give you the discount this time. But eh, I'll go get it for you. (laughs) Yes. Oh, thank God you have at least one left. I'll take it. You know, for me to make this elixir, it takes about a year for me to make it properly. And I did make another batch, but it won't be ready for another month. There we are, a little drop of tequila. Hmm. What color did I use last time? Oh, yes, green. Uh, There we are. Just a little drop of honey. (laughs) That should do it. Just blow a little dust on it, and she'll think it's an ancient potion. <laughs> what a moron! Oh, God. I decided to go ahead and give you the discount that I gave you last time. Only $75. (laughs) Thank you. You are so nice to me. I'll make sure that I refer all my friends to you. You are such an angel. I'll see you next week. I'm the one who's grateful. You're my best client. I'll see you next week. Bye now. What an incredible idiot. I I think I'll finish off that tequila. Oh, Oh, yeah. End of Act One. 
And now, Act 2. Christina was in the back part of the storefront and took a shot of tequila when she heard a chime of the front lobby ring. She quickly popped a breath mint into her mouth and opened the door. She saw two young girls standing in the lobby. Hello, young ladies. How can I help you today? Hi, my name is Kenneth Reaper, and this is my friend Jenny Thomas. I would like you to tell my fortune. It says on the window that it costs $20. I have it. Could you tell me my fortune? Well, most certainly. Have a seat, ladies. Here's the money. Thank you, young lady. And what is it you'd like to know? I don't know. Um, maybe what my husband will look like and how many kids we'll have. Oh my god, is everything okay? Ah, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, I see a tall, dark man with blonde hair with you. And you, you have... Two young children with you. The oldest is a boy and looks just like his father. And the other is a pretty little girl. Wow, thank you so much. What does my husband do for a living? Well, he's a doctor, of course. <laughs> Did you hear that, Jenny? I'm going to marry a handsome doctor and have two kids. Maybe you will. No, really, for real. You heard what Madam Christina said. You might marry a man with brown hair or red hair, maybe black hair, and the whole parents think their kids are beautiful. But Madam Christina can see into the future and see things, right, Madam Christina? Yes. Yeah, I can. There's things that happen that cannot be seen. Like what? Ah, uh, you know, like, uh, uh sometimes. A person can uh, get sick, or, or 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 there's an unforeseen disaster, and uh... see, I told you she was a phony. She just gave you a twenty-dollar story time. Christina reaches across the table and puts her hands on top of Jenny's, and speaks to her in an angry tone. Young lady. Be careful of the spoken words. Uh, they, they can bring harm to you if you speak them to the wrong person. Many who have challenged me have had misfortune fall upon them. I see disaster in your future. You are a creepy lady. Come on, Candace. Let's go. You have been warned! Something very tragic will happen to you before the sun rises tomorrow. Your spoken words have consequences! After the girls left, Christina went into the back room and laughed hysterically. She had a great deal of fun spooking the young girls. End of Act Two. And now... A word from our sponsor. Sunday, Sunday, Sunday. Dingling Brothers presents the Meccano Carnival. Gasp at a toaster swallowing an entire butter knife. Witness a freakish refrigerator with two ice dispensers. See a microwave shot 50 feet in the air. Bust a gasket with the hilarious antics of the All Weed Whacker Band. Thrill to the horror of the television without cable. All appliances under 10 amps get in free. Plus free spark plugs and air filters for the young ones. The Dingling Brothers Meccano Carnival. Show up early, show up late, but just show up! And now, Act 3. The next day, Christina had almost forgotten about the young girls as she was making some more fake potions. She dropped one of the vials and it shattered. Ah, uh, just what I need. Oil on the floor. I'd better clean this up. Oh. 
<clears throat> Coming! Just a minute! What? Oh, didn't I just tell your fortune yesterday, young lady? I, what was your name again? And, and yeah, I'm sorry, you're, you're a little friend. You murdered Jenny. When we left you, we were walking and a car ran a stop sign and killed Jenny! Wow. Oh, wow. Dang. Oh, I'm sorry that happened to you, kid, but it wasn't my doing. I just told her that to scare her. Yeah, I didn't kill your friend, and I'm, I'm sorry that happened to her. You said it. You spoke those words to her, and now she's dead. Oh, my child. <laughs> that was only coincidence. What happened had nothing to do with me, okay? So Jenny was right. You are a phony. You did say that spoken words have consequences. Try these spoken words. Burn in hell. You're going to die by burning to death. Oh, that's enough, young lady. You need to leave. Just remember my spoken words. After her encounter with Candace, Christina lit a candle for Jenny and returned to the back room. Oh, poor little girl. Huh? She'll get over it. She'll probably never go to another fortune teller again. <laughs> oh, oh, let me get that candle over there uh, for the stove to light for her. My leg! Oh! Oh, my leg! I can't move! Oh. Remember you told me that spoken words have consequences. Well, indeed they do. Here are your consequences. Come, come back! Oh! No! Ah! No, I can't move! Oh my god! I can't move! Oh! 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 Be careful what you say, because those spoken words have consequences. <laughs> spoken Word is a production of Troop of Lost Souls Entertainment and Film Syndicate, written by Charlie Mitchell, produced by Anthony Stapiello, and directed by Raquel Baker. Post-production and sound effects by Brian Collins. Commercials by Joe J. Thomas. Video post by Nobu Koito. The cast was played by Ricky Avest West <laughs> Ricky Yvette Westmoreland as Christina Baez, Laura Goldstein as Sue, Pearl Strub as Candace Reaver, Cadence Hassel as Jenny Thomas, and I am Trevor Bates, your psychotic storyteller and keeper of the vault. Remember, like, comment, share, and subscribe. Thank you. Tune in next week and listen if you dare. <laughs>